Megan, 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 there it is. Take it, take it, take it, take it. Justin, Justin, Justin! Double! There we go, here you go, pick it up, pick it up, let's go. Get it out. There you go. Triple. Give me yours too. Triples! Triples! Hey all you addicts, welcome back to another Addicted Life. Today we're in beautiful Astoria doing a little silver fishing. So stay with us, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this video out to your friends and family. And come along, it's gonna be fun. What's up, Nick? Nice to meet you, brother. Chris. Chris, nice to meet you, my man. You. Yes, everybody, this was done on a cut plug cutter. <laughs> I got so much, I got trash for using a herring cutter. Oh, I know. And that's all Cameron Black's fault, by the way. Safety little rundown here. Channel 16 on the radio, on my VHF here, you just turn the radio on to hail the Coast Guard if anything was to happen to me. Life jackets are in the white bag. There's neck ring style life jackets. You're more than welcome to wear them. It's not mandatory. There's type one life jackets in the front right compartment where it's labeled life jackets. Those are what we'd use if we were to actually go down or capsize so the Coast Guard could see us and keep you afloat. The water's cold. Fire extinguisher, first aid kit, flares are up in the front left compartment. Um, if I fall overboard, this red cord here, pull that cord, it'll kill my motor and then come back and pick me up, please. Uh, other than that, we are uh, good. You're always gonna go bait first, then your flasher, and then when you drop your lead, you need to lift your rod tip. The biggest problem with tangles is guys throw their lead in and they drop their tip and the herring comes up, the weight goes down, and wraps up, and we're not fishing. And the more time we're tangled, the less time we're fishing. So basically reel up to the tip, make sure your, your line counter is at zero. There's a little button here to zero yourself out. And then just go one pull at a time until the depth I tell you to go to. The back three rods will be on the bottom or close to it. All right, Megan, you guys can go ahead and get down. You done all right? Yeah. 20 and 25 on the bow rods, guys. So. All right, guys, stop number one was a failure. I'm gonna blame it on Sean. We're gonna make a move. We're gonna jump over to another little reef and uh, hopefully they'll be there and get away from all these bugs that just showed up randomly. <laughs> stay tuned, guys. This is how you stay alive when you're a fishing guide. Yeah. It might be moving a little fast right here still, but we're gonna give a test run. Okay, go ahead. I want the bow rods at 18 and 22. Middle rods at uh, 25 and 28, and then the back rod on the bottom, probably 30. Clean all your stuff off, guys. Oh, got one. <laughs> I can't believe you guys fell for that. I don't even have a rod. All of you thought I had one. Point, strip line, strip line. Well, that was the 99%, so the rest of them we should hook. Yeah, we better be 99. <laughs> that was the 1% right there. He was late on the strip. Yeah. He started taking his clothes off instead of stripping line. Right? Ow. <laughs> yep. So you can tell, see how he stripped it all up on the side there? And see how the bit, the hole's all gapped out now? We're giving this five more minutes. Ed's had six bites in like the last 10 minutes, so. We'll probably, we're gonna give this like five more minutes. There you go. That's not the right kind, but it'll be fun. Real fast. Oh, sh you either got a seal on you or. Oh my 
my god, it's a giant. <laughs> I'm just gonna get this guy out of the net here. Excuse me. You gotta take care of these little buddies. There you go. Pretty little snook. He's bleeding. We're gonna get him back. Oh, you look bastard. Gotta give him a little kick in that. All right, we broke the ice, guys. Not the right kind, but still fun. So, obviously, Chinook season's closed, but still a lot of fun, right? Yeah. yeah. You beat up on you pretty good. Biggest thing I ever got. That's the problem out here, you know? It doesn't matter where you target coho. Like, you can target coho all you want, but you catch Chinook on accident. Okay, it's 9.03 right now. We're giving it till 9.10. If we don't have a bite, we're running to the checkerboard. Obviously, we got a bite, but not the right kind. Feel them up, guys. All right, guys, just got a call. There's a decent little snap, and uh, so we're gonna jump up just above the checkerboard, and, or just below the checkerboard, and uh, hopefully get in on it. So, we're close, it should take long. that one anyways that was a solid like 28 27 28 pounder get him back in if you got bait get it out get it out there you go. Here, come back here with me come back here with me keep the rod up there you go just wait megan you're on megan you're on. i'm on it Triple? Yep. Okay, hold tight. Just let me get them on. Let me know when you're ready. I'm ready. Hold on. Keep tension. Okay, thank you. Give me yours, too. Triples! Triples! It's pandemonium! This one's a wild. Who is this? Okay, that bow rod's a wild. Beautiful specimen. Look at that thing. Alright, let's get baits back on these eights out. Whoever's got rods ready to go, let me see them. Holy shit. Dude, look at that. Zoom in on that fin. Dude, I don't even know if I should keep that. Does it not look like it's just been snipped off? Yep. That way, yeah. Megan, sorry. I, right. I'm not going to risk it on that. No, neither. Somebody cut that fin off, like, within a day or two. Like, there's no way. That thing was 100% a wild fish with a fin cut. That was crazy. I've never seen that before. All right, guys, first pass in the new spot that we got called on to. We had a double on Chinook. Had one break through the net, which kind of sucked. But... And then one coho, release two. Lots of action, so stay tuned. Should be good. There's. 
there's the target species, ladies and gentlemen. That's pretty standard. Megan, come up one crank. That's a pretty standard sized fish for this time of the year. They, they'll get bigger as the weeks go on and we'll start to see the size increase over them, but that's a pretty standard hatchery silver. As you can see, the adipose fin right here is missing. That's the indicator of, you know, if it's a hatchery fish, if it was born in a hatchery, if it's a you know, fish that's reproduced or uh, spawned naturally. So they gotta be missing this fin. Get some more. Oh, he's got a big old fresh seal mark on him. Alright guys, so this is a little bit bigger fish. This is kind of, will be the average fish here in a week or two, but um, as you can see a little bit bigger than the last one. Uh, still a hatchery fish. Another sea lion fish right there. That's from a sea lion. We got problems out here. But anyways, I'm going to take my Gerber knife and as soon as you catch these fish, it's really important that you bleed them. Otherwise the bleed just leaks into the meat and you cut and spend all this money and time getting out here to fish and you got a nasty filet when you get home. So it's really important to take care of your fish when you catch them is what I do is I hold my fingers in between the gills like this and I poke right in behind their gill plate and just trace the gill plate like this and they get the main artery every time and then it bleeds like that. Ooh. Get him, get him, get him, get him, get him. Back on. Hold the top, Megan. I thought it was silver the way he ate it. I told you there was a good mark on the screen. <laughs> said I ain't ready. So I'm gonna sh show you the difference between a Chinook and a Coho real quick. So with Chinook, number one, you see these big old spots all over him on his back. And then right on the mouth right there, that dark black line is what indicates a Chinook. They'll have spots on their tail and all over their big, big spots on their back. So that's a Chinook. There that one goes. And then if you look at a Coho, We'll have this guy right here. A lot smaller spots on the back. They're almost a green color on their gill plate in here. Just real. And then if you look at their mouth, right on the teeth line, there's that solid white teeth line there. And on a Chinook, that's gonna be all black. And on a Coho, it'll be nice and white like that. But you can see on the, those spots on the tail, almost like a shimmer on the tail instead of those big spots and those spots on their pec fins. So that's kind of how you indicate a coho. You can always check your regulations to see how they, you know, how to identify fish. But if you're ever in question, if you're ever questioning it, just let the fish go. It's not worth the ticket. But it's pretty, once, once you get it figured out, it's pretty simple. So here we go. Another one eaten by a seal. Lift! Keeper, <laughs> he's got a seal mark, so we'll kill him. <laughs> I put the sword away. God, I felt cool right there. I don't know why. <laughs> Justin, just like that. Boom, boom, by the bank. Two seal marks. Yeah. yeah. I like them. You're gonna get half a plate. Crap. <laughs> <laughs>
God, that's, that's a big old Chinook. Oh, it's all right. It's all right. It, it was a Chinook. About a 20 pounder. No big deal. We're going to put a little super series action out there. I usually don't fish them when I'm fishing herring rods, but every now and then I'll just throw one out the back and see what happens. Maybe we'll catch one on it. Maybe not. <laughs> All right. Deploying the suit. Oh, there's a big mark on the bottom. Put some down. Make sure you guys are down on the bottom, these middle rods. All right, guys. We got into a pretty good bite there. Quite a few fish. You know, we let some go. Killed a few. Had a few opportunities that we missed. Had one fall through the net. But if you want to see more of this, we're about to make a power move. Tune back in for episode two. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this out to your friends and family. Stay tuned, guys.